Hi, Diane here, and today we are going to talk about the management skills section of the weekly Diva Performance Review. So if you need to get caught up, you can look at the top of the screen and you will see a link to the kickoff video of this whole weekly Diva Performance Review. I'll put another link in a couple of seconds. Apparently YouTube likes when I space my little tags out. So in a couple of seconds, there will be one for video one, and in a couple of seconds, there will be one for video two. So we're gonna go into video three, which is the management skills. So if you've been following along, you know that the whole idea behind this is the concept of using an annual performance review for our lives. It is loosely based on the performance review that I used to get when I worked. I found a couple of them in uh, when I moved recently and reading through them was kind of a little bit of a lift because I got to see things that I was good at, but I also got to see things I wasn't good at. I got to have the benefit of time now and I can say, yeah, they were right. And so I wanna apply those same principles to life and start to identify ways to be better and happier and more supportive of other people and more supportive of myself. So, and I'm more supportive of you. <laughs> That's kind of the whole idea here is that we are all going to be weekly divas. We are all going to find a way to put ourselves first at least once a week. And that is the goal. So I'm going to jump right on into the management skills section. And there are seven categories here. They are personal growth, which is a favorite of mine, technology, style, love, education and development, creative problem solving, and organization. And I'm not gonna make you throw anything out. Well, no, maybe I am, but not crazy stuff like we see on TV these days. Anyway, um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk through each section and what goes into each section to help you figure out how you would score yourself on the Weekly Diva Performance Review. If you wanna get a copy, just look below this video in the notes there will be a link. It should be like the first thing under there. There's a link to get your own copy. You download from my website. Doesn't You don't have to do anything except give an email to get it, but I'm not doing anything with your email. So it's just a way for you to get the, I don't even think you do need to give your email actually now that I think about it. You just click and you download and there you go. So here is personal growth. The three things to help you figure out how you'd score yourself. Sets annual goals and tracks personal growth and achievement establishes intentions to create positive life and value self and saves money and or reduces debt. So we talked about this a little bit at the very beginning because page one was about financials and about where you stand with your money. Personal growth is all of those things. It's kind of establishing where you are and where you want to be. So that's kind of like the whole, just by doing this, you are on the road <laughs> with me. Um, that's so that's kind of a they're self-explanatory technology embraces ways that technology can make life easier and does not let technological advances become barriers to living a full life so that's kind of the thing we're in this wonderful age where there's technology that can make everything easier for us sometimes we are all over it sometimes we are totally annoyed with it and don't want to take the time to learn something new and sometimes we are so enamored of it that we tune out the rest of the world because of our technology. I mean, how many times do you see people walking around more, paying more attention to their phone than they do to the people around them? Happens all the time. So technology is kind of that tightrope. You have to know when it's convenient and when it's good to use it, but you also have to know when to set it down and participate in regular life too. So that's kind of the deal with technology there. Style. Demonstrates pride in appearance, wears one item of jewelry every day, and does not wear stained garments in public with an exclamation point. <laughs> so uh, my background is in fashion. I worked as I worked for retailers for over 20 years. And so obviously I like clothes, I like fashion, I like all that kind of stuff. But I will tell you that recently, as I've been writing from home and as I've been going through a lot of like difficulties in my personal life, I kind of started to just get up, throw on the clothes that were closest to me, and go to work. I didn't put on shoes. I just padded around barefooted. I was in California, so it wasn't freezing. Um, but still, then I started walking to the library just to get some exercise. So every single day I was putting on my sneakers, walking a couple miles, working there, walking a couple miles home, which made sense. I'm not going to walk to the library in heels. But I just started to fall into this trap of just like it, it didn't matter. It was It was what was easy. I didn't even think about it. And that wasn't really me. And... 
So I, I instituted my own rule and it was wear one item of jewelry every single day, just to show that I am making an effort. So you might notice that you see these earrings a lot in these videos. That's because I, they, it was shortly after I came up with that little thing where I said, I'm going to do this. And I bought these cause I loved them. And I thought it's just easy every single day, no matter what, I, if I put on a sweatshirt, I put on my hoop earrings. If I put on a sweater, I put on my hoop earrings. If I'm getting dressed up, I can put on my hoop earrings, but at least I'm putting something on and it makes me feel a little bit elevated from just one step up from pajamas. So again, that is where that comes from. It's just a way to tell yourself that you are a little bit more special than you were yesterday. Um, does not wear stained garments in public. So here's also sort of a funny thing. When I worked in retail, you know, we kind of treated the store. We were almost like it was our own little fashion show because we had, we bought our clothes at the store. We all came in and we wanted to show off what we bought or what we got through our clothing allowance. And, and so everybody was, we would also, if it was slow, we would pull clothes off the floor and try them on. It was worth it for us to know how things fit so we could help customers find what fit them best. So one of my really close friends and I had very similar tastes. So we would go in the fitting room together and it was a joke between us that whatever worked on me didn't work on her and whatever worked on her didn't work on me. So we just swapped things back and forth until we found what we liked. But the funny thing was, since she got to see my clothes as I was taking them off, she started noticing that it was like every day there was like a safety pin over here. There was duct tape holding up the hem of my pants. There was a missing button. My hem came out, so I had a staple in it. So these are secrets I don't really tell everybody all the time because I like to think that I'm a little more together than that. But it was an ongoing thing. And I remember like one time she just started laughing. It's like every day there's something like something going here. Outfits MacGyvered somehow. So it it kind of became that thing. It was like, do you wear a pin because there's a little stain on your jacket? No, you get rid of the jacket. <laughs> do you have a favorite sweatshirt, but you got a big chocolate smudge on it? Well, guess what? That sweatshirt needs to go unless you have some painting to do. We just have to remember that, that we're, we're better than that. We need to remember that you don't wear things like that out in public. If it's your favorite sweatshirt in the world and you want to snuggle up in it at home, that's fine, but that's where it should stay. Okay, that, I went on for a little too long about that, probably because I was avoiding the next category, which is love. Okay, so is open to giving and receiving love both romantically and to family and friends. Is available for romance and or companionship. All right, what I will say here is we all do need to be open to love. We need to be open to our families and our friends and the people who care about us because sometimes it's easy to shut out the world. And sometimes it's easy to say, I don't need anybody. I don't want anybody. I just need to be alone. I'm kind of there right now. And I have to remember that this is going to be temporary, hopefully. <laughs> so the key is you can be unavailable to love. That's totally fine. But it's a temporary stage and you can accept that. So you can say you're not ready. Tons of people aren't ready. And that's great because it's better to not be ready than to not be ready and think you're ready and then start something when you're not ready and then that's gonna blow up and then you're gonna be in even more pain. So we all need time to kind of like get over things, but I do think it's important that you come to terms with that. And if you're not in a romantic relationship, you choose not to be in a romantic relationship, you still know that there is love for you in the world and around you in the people that you spend time with. That's what I'm gonna say about love. Okay, moving on. <laughs> education and development, considers physical health as important as mental health, reads books, any books, reading is good for the brain. See, that's a neat, that you should score well here. Uh, recognizes bad habits and seeks external help for improvement, friends, coaches, teachers, and colleagues. So education and development. Um, again, it's important that we do something for ourselves. We can't leave, no matter how passionately we pursue our goals, we have to remember that in order to achieve and sustain that level of performance, we also have to take care of our minds and we also have to take care of our bodies. That means eating well. I'm Look, I like pizza. You know, I'm not gonna say you can't have fun food, but again, you can't have pizza all the time. Have a salad every now and then, drink more water, 
These are things that we need to incorporate in us. We also need exercise. It helps your brain. I can sit at my computer for eight hours and try to write, but I tell you what, when I'm stuck, I stand up and I stretch for 15 minutes, I get ideas. I think that's how it works for all of us. We just get in motion. When we're stuck, we get in motion and it helps us break through what we have to break through. So those things are important. Reading is important. You read books, that's good for your brain. And recognizing bad habits and seeks external help. So this, okay, yes, it kind of feeds off of personal growth, but because this is education and development, this is saying, I'm not really great at this thing. And I know I'm not really great at this thing. So how am I going to get better? Am I going to, I could hire somebody or I could take an online course and they'll teach me how to get better at that thing. Maybe it's hiring somebody to do that thing for you and then you don't have to worry about it and then you say, okay, I know it's never gonna be my thing but I figured out a way to not let that hold me back. That's what goes into education and development. Okay, creative problem solving. Open to new ways of improving quality of life. Consistently strives for better day-to-day -day living. Helps others without expecting anything in return and solves problems quickly and creatively. So when you're creative, you tend to be creative all in all avenues of your life. And that's a really fun thing um, because you do come up with solutions to things that maybe other people wouldn't see. So if you see solutions to somebody else's problem, help them out. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. And if you can make somebody else's life easier, they'll make your life easier. And it's an all the big happy family. Um, but the key here is you have to also release a little bit of control. And this is my problem. So maybe it's your problem too. I like to do everything for myself. I like to think I can do everything for myself. I like to, I'm a big do-it-yourselfer and I am horrible at asking people for help. It's painful to me. Cause I think it, I sometimes think it means that I'm not good enough, but that's not what it means for any of us. Because every single person is getting help somewhere. We just don't all know that. So that is a key to creative problem solving. It's trying to figure out your own answers or being able to ask other people when you need help solving those problems. The last category under the management skills section is organizing. And this is manages time well and does not fritter unnecessarily, cleans slash straightens workspace and living space regularly, and places a value on creating a pleasant environment. So again, if you live in a big messy place and everything's just all over the place and you're cluttered, your energy is cluttered because your space is cluttered and you don't pay any attention to that, that's probably not the best thing for you because you, what you don't realize is every little thing, there's energy attached to everything. There's energy attached to where did I leave the checkbook? Where did I leave the keys? What am I going to do with that pile of clothes that's been sitting by the door? When am I going to get to donation, the donating place? When, when am I going to take care of the recycling? I have all these things that need to go away and I don't know when I'm going to figure out when it's going to happen. Uh-oh, it's cold out. I don't know where I put my gloves. Now the weather got colder and I can't find warm pajamas. There's energy attached to all of that. And if you know where all that all of that stuff is and if you eliminate the stuff that you don't need, you don't have your energy wrapped up in all those items and you're freer to think about the things that you want to think about, the things that you will help you move forward in your life. So I think organization is important. I know the whole uh, magic of tidying up is a big thing because apparently she told people to get rid of books and I'm not telling you that because as you know, I said books are good. So keep your books. Um, but I do think it is important sometimes to maybe think about if you're surrounding yourself, if we are all surrounding ourselves with too many things, and, you know, there's a quote in my family. We say this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We constantly quote Spock saying, sometimes wanting is better than having. And it's kind of true because it's easy to become materialistic and want things. And the thing is, you want something and you think about it all the time and then you get it. And then it might go on a shelf. You might not appreciate it. And that's not good because it's part of that appreciate what you have thing because that's when you really start to realize what it is when you do need something new 
Okay, so that is it. So those are the seven categories of the management skill management skills section of the weekly diva performance. Wrap it all up with your summary, but I am going to show you this page in management skills. You just mark off your scores. There's a spot for your strengths because we're all awesome, so write it down. There's a spot for your developmental opportunities because we probably all aren't excellent at things. Like I said, there's one right there that's gonna get a big old needs improvement or below expectation or something uh, for me. Um, but again, do that, check how you scored overall here, give yourself a little score down here, that'll help you figure out your total review. And a year from now, when you look back at this, you'll be able to quantify how well you did to what you said you were gonna do, okay? So that is the management skills section. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Establishes intentions to create positive life and value self. Create positive life and value yourself. Ourselves, we can't, no matter how much overachiever we might, blah, 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 that didn't make any sense. Okay, no matter how much we pursue our goals, we, I hope I remember where, the, okay, no matter how much we pursue our goals, how